All right, so tonight we're gonna do a video on uh, how to tie the duck and buck spinner fly. Uh, I use these things in the mountains, catch all kinds of rainbow trout, brook trout, brown trout, they all like them. It's a minnow imitation. Um, turns out really good. And we're gonna make them with uh, duck feathers from birds that I shot over the last couple years. And uh, some turkey feathers and um, some bucktail. So. So we call them duck and buck lures. They got a little bit of nature built into them. Good way to recycle uh, what you're working with. So check it out. So I wanted to take a minute and just talk about, uh, you know, these upland birds and, and waterfowl that we harvest and, uh, you know, some of these color patterns. I mean, if you look at this, this is a, a ring neck. He's got red, almost purple iridescent feathers on the front side. He's got these almond polka dotted feathers down his side, all the way to white, blue, green, even purple on the tail feather. So, I mean, you could tie endless combinations of, of trout lures, any lures, you know, any species of fish really with these, uh, with these birds, you know, and that's, that's just one bird right there. That's a, that's a ring neck pheasant that I had mounted. Uh, if you come over here, this is a canvas back I had mounted, and this is another great example when you need those white colors. Um, from a distance, these birds look snow white, but when you get up on them, you can tell that there's actually a lot of modeling in that. There's some gray in the mix, and it's a great, great color pattern that really mimics a minnow. So if, uh, if you're a bird hunter and you don't tie flies, Save these feathers for someone that does because these things are priceless, man. You can really make a lot of cool fishing lures out of these and uh, they're hard to come by in like a traditional marketplace kind of setting. So save those feathers, reuse them, man. Another way to get the most out of these birds that you're harvesting. All right, so we got our fly tying set up here. Just a uh, hook holder. Don't know the uh, professional name for that, but uh, that's what holds your hook for you. Got some bush beer. Uh, high fluting fly tires probably definitely wouldn't approve of that. And uh, we've got some dyed bucktails, got some chartreuse, some pink, and some black. We got some elver feathers from some hooded mergansers I shot. I literally shoot them just for their uh, almond colored flank feathers, uh, their elver feathers, and I use the dogs to, I mean, use the um, the ducks to train dogs for a couple friends of mine, and I also use them for uh, baiting some traps when I'm trapping. Uh, so got that, got a turkey wing feather, turkey fan feather, some plain old number six eagle claw hooks, some 80 pound braid that we're going to use to attach these hooks and, uh, more to that, more to come. Cool little trick there. And we're going to be attaching these, uh, treble hooks. So, uh, other than that, the only thing synthetic is this marabou flash here, which is just awesome stuff. Uh, polar flash and uh, this is actually we're gonna try this out and see what it does this is a piece of weave and uh, somebody gave it to me as a joke and uh, it's synthetic hair but it has a really good pattern that looks a lot like a minnow so we're gonna incorporate some of that and see how it turns out but uh, yeah so that's the setup that's what we're gonna do and basically the whole point of this is uh, you know reusing some of that wildlife man you, you know you get the meat off of it a lot of people just take these birds and deer and just toss them in the gut pile but uh you can do a whole lot more with these feathers and these bucktails and stuff so it's good to take the time to learn how to do this stuff and uh you know these fishing lures probably cost me 25 cents to make you buy them in the store they're seven bucks so check it out see what you think you know see if you can pick something up learn something stick around all right so step one you're going to take your line. This is uh, 210 uh, thickness. And uh, with that end, you're just going to run that right to the middle in here. A little trick I find to make this work even easier. Put it up to your lips and just suck through that end real quick. There it is. Pops right out the other side. Take your bobbin. Put it just like that. And you're ready to start. So that what that does is allows you to hold this and wrap around your hook. Alright, next step. Take your hook. 
and we're just going to, I'm actually going to do it this way. And you just tighten down that and you're good to go. Now your hook's nice and solid. Give that a little tighten. And now you can't, now it doesn't go anywhere. Next step, take a piece of this 80 pound uh, braided fishing line and cut it a little longer than you need. Get yourself some sharp scissors too, because these, these are a little worn out. Burn both ends. This is very important. This is why it does not pull off of your hook. If these ends aren't burnt, this stuff's kind of slick and it'll pull right off. So give yourself a good little ball on both ends. Thread that through your hook. Make a loop like so. Now we're ready to do this. So start just by wrapping one end on there pretty good and then go back with the other one i got way too much line down on this thing all right now you just take it and go around it and we're just wrapping that line around that hook give yourself a little bit of a bed is what they call that or what i call that now you got a little bit of line on there or something to bite onto Take this guy right here, get it where you want it, and we're going to wrap it right into place. Once you got a few wraps on it, go ahead and stop. And you can see how it's twisted? You can untwist this right now while there's still not a lot of wraps around it. Just get a bunch of wraps on it. It's not going to be so easy. So what I like to do is make sure that half of that line is on one side of the hook, the other half's on the other. Now that it's in place, oops, try to spin a little bit more. So keep it going. And you can see I'm just working my way down that hook. This is a new bobbin. It's a little, uh, it pulls, it doesn't have a lot of tension on it, so it's actually kind of pulling. But now you look, <clears throat> that hook is held on there by all that thread right there. That will never pull off. That allows the hook to swing freely and uh, gives you a good stinger hook off the back. If the, if the trout misses the main hook, a lot of times you're going to catch them on that second hook. As you can see, that thing is on there tight. There you go. So the next step, pick your colors. So this one we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do a, a just a simple pink and white one on this one. So take some of your bucktail here, snip it off. It's all about length. So you wanna figure out your length and uh, put that on there. And you just keep wrapping in the same direction you've already been going. Again, kind of roll it around that shank so you get good, adequate wrap. And as you can see, there it is. We're starting away. Next, we're going to do a little flash. So you take your flash, find a little bit, and this stuff goes a long way, so you don't need a lot of flash. Okay, add that to it. And you always wanna get the stuff you're gonna put on the very end attached before you work your way up. So we're just putting on the uh, little bit of flash and a little bit of this uh, bucktail just to give it some body. All right, I snipped a little more off. And this is the cool thing about this deal. Loosen this just a hair and you can rotate it. Really get in here and work on this thing. All 
All right. And we'll add a little, a little bit more. On this side. That's what we're working with so far. And we'll put a little black in there just to add some contrast. Again, pick out a little bit. Snip it. Figure out where you want it. So you got like a little gap right here in between where you've added the other two colors. We're going to take that and just add that in right there. Remember to spread it out. As you can see, we're already starting to look like a fishing lure here. So you can see a big bear spot right there. We're gonna fill that in with some black. Again, peel off some of your bucktail. And give it a little snip snip. And proceed to wrap. Let's this bright green thread is actually kind of cool for this demonstration because you can really see what I'm doing with it. So you can see all the wraps in there. All right, so next we're gonna take a canvas back feather here. And you wanna look for your longest sections of these feathers. So like out here towards the end, you can kind of see, I mean, you see how long that feather really is when you start to look at it to the spine here. So uh, let's take a little section right here. And I mean, like I was saying about these ducks, I mean, if you look at wild ducks, man, there's a million varieties and sp of species and color patterns. And I mean, it's just the nature's palette for making lures, man. It's, it's really cool. So as you can see, we're adding that feather in right there. And there's where our white comes in. It's that canvas back. <clears throat> Take another piece of feather. Just cut down right next to the actual, uh, the the actual, I guess your your quill of the feather. Is the word I'm looking for there. Take this puppy, rotate it over. And there you have it. Give it some extra wraps. And I always like to go a little heavier on the uh, material that I use in these. Always put a little extra in there because after you've been throwing this thing all day on the river and it's been chewed up by a bunch of trout, you know, she's going to look a little skimpier than she was when you started. So I always like to take them and just add a little extra with it more than you think you do. And these things, you know, kind of simulate fins or, you know, if you do some of the other styles of tying here, uh, you know, like different species of flies and stuff like that. I'll show you how to make those stand up and, and do some cool stuff. I might do it in this video. I might do it in another one. These are, these are more flat laying because they're a minnow, but again, just take it and just tie it on in there. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I wish there was more to it than that, but there you have it. And uh, that right there, as is, will uh, catch the hell out of some, some trout here in Virginia. Till this point, it's just a bunch of wraps. So you're just doing a twist, put it over the eye, pull it tight. And with this light line, again, I do a bunch of these just to make sure. All right. Do one more in there. And one more over top of that. One step you can't leave out, this is really important. Make sure you raid your wife's clear nail polish or nail strengthener. 
This is called Hard as Nails Extreme Wear. And uh, you want it in clear. And you're going to take it. And you're going to brush it on your thread. And just get that thread wet. Alright, so here it is. Finished product. Talking buck spinner fly. And this is going to go on an actual inline spinner that I make as well. And you can see that this thing's got some pretty colors in it, man. I think this is going to uh, probably catch the fish. Just like the rest of them always do. Alright, so here you have it finished product you can see this one's got uh some uh canvas back wing feathers on it canvas back canvas back this one's a uh turkey wing feather and this one's some turkey fan feather um i've just attached these uh inline spinners that i make and i'll probably do a video on those as well it's really easy it's just a wire bender a couple beads a clevis and a colorado hammered out uh nickel blade so put it together you end up with these and you can see they're about uh about three inches long uh number six hook number 12 trailer treble and trout absolutely destroy these things so stay tuned and uh keep checking back we'll probably do a video here in the next couple weeks on catching trout with these things